Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be continuing my seasonal doodle. Today I'm going to take on the gardening theme and doodle around that subject, so let's begin by sketching out all the objects. I love the idea of a short overall to be the center outfit of this doodle, so I'm just going to draw out a simple one. I started by drawing out the shorts or the bottom part as the guide and then continue upwards to draw the rest of the top section. I'm also going to include some gardening boots. By the way, if there are any elements that you want to include but you're unsure of drawing, like for example this boot, I would recommend for you to look up references for those individual items just to get the basic shapes then of course you can customize further. Just for an example, I'm really bad at drawing boots or shoes in general so this is the reference image that I use to draw these out. For this doodle, I've also decided to add pots with plants or just stacks of pots. I'm also going to include some gardening tools, flowers, as well as root vegetables to be spread across the page depending on the space that I have. I think you guys know the drill by now. This is my fifth doodle that I've drawn or painted in this style. I tried to spend as little time as possible cleaning out the lines at this point and I also try to not include too much details. I just want to get the ideas down on paper and figure out the spacing. This way I don't have to waste my time and effort making something so clean than having to erase just to tweak the positioning of something that I already drew out nicely. Of course it's normal to get caught in drawing now and then as I did with a potted plant on the left but I'll soon find out that I'll be erasing it to reposition the pot to fix some spacing issues and I actually did this a few times. This is why I just want to remind you guys to sketch very loosely so you don't have to waste as much time as I did. And for those of you who wants to jump straight into painting, I'll of course have the outline available in my coffee shop. You just have to remind me probably in the comment section to put it up though. On the left hand side, I'm just going to draw on some beetroots. Of course, you guys can also customize the elements that you include in your doodle so you don't have to follow me exactly. Or you can also use the traceable outline and then add things on or even replace things if you have better ideas. This is when I realized the left hand side is very full in comparison to the right hand side so I want to balance everything out and this is where I ended up erasing the whole area that I've drawn out on the left and you can also see now that I'm putting less effort on the potted plant since I have to erase it a few times. If this is something that happens to you, you like all of the elements that you've included on one side but it all just looks a little bit too full. Other than shifting things around, you can also reduce the size so there's more space in between those items which is what I'm doing here. Once I'm happy with all the elements that I've included, I just added some small bits to fill in the rest of the space. Things which are easy for me to add on like leaves as well as flowers. As for the colors, this is Yellow Ochre by Holbein, as the Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Grey of Grey by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, Sepia by Holbein, and Terra Verde by Holbein. I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martens. For the outline, I decided to do something different. I'm going to be using this brown pen. This is by Next. And I'm also going to try to outline some of the elements using colored pencil. This is nothing special, it's just a hobby grade colored pencil. It's really cheap. It doesn't even have names for the colors, just numbers, but here are the colors that I'll be using in case you're wondering. Because I'm outlining this way, I have to paint it on before outlining them with the colored pencils. So you just want to make sure that all the lines are clean before you paint on or else you won't be able to erase the pencil marks if you have paint on top of it. Here I'm starting by using a mix of grey of grey and indigo to create a bluish grey and I'm using my small brush to paint on some of the metallic gardening tools. After this I want the base color to dry and I added more indigo to line some of the sides or the handle and I'm doing this for both of the items. I'm also going to use the same grayish blue to paint the overalls and I'm going to do this 
per section since I want to play a little bit with the values. Here I'm starting with the same color mixture but it has more gray of gray to make it lighter and I'm going to paint this on except for the buttons, the hem and the waistband. For the rest of the areas, I'm just going to use gray of gray as is and a thin consistency. For the back of the shoulder straps, I'm going to use a darker color so this has more indigo in the mix and I'm using a slightly thicker consistency. I'm also going to use this color to paint in the inside of the overall and some of the shadows for the belts. I'm going to use the same color to paint the blades of the scissors as well as that small pot on the right. I'm also going to use this for the watering can but I haven't decided at this point so I'm going to move on to paint parts of the green rays. I used a thick consistency mix of Hansi Yellow Medium with Terra Verde and I'm using my small brush to paint some of the filler leaves and this includes the stem. I'm also going to use the same color to paint the leaves of the carrots. I started by using a thick consistency and as you can see I erased the pencil marks first because I just find it's much easier to paint freehand. So after I'm done painting on the stems, I added on the leaves. I sort of just painting one side of the stem and painting lines which gradually shortens as I reach the bottom of the leaf. And I'm just going to paint this on both sides of the stems that I've already painted depending on the availability of space. In terms of color, I like to use some with more Hansi Yellow and some with more Terra Verde in the mix in case parts of the leaves are overlapping each other. I'm also going to use the same color to paint the base color for the leaves of the tomatoes and after this I'm going to follow through using a bit of indigo with Terra Verde for a dark green. I'm just going to line some of those leaves to give it a bit of shadow. I'm also going to add tiny little stems using the dark green. So those are basically the green mixtures. You can play around with the ratio and pick out a tone that you'd like to paint all the greeneries. Here I'm just using whatever that I've already mixed on my palette to paint the leaves off the beetroot. But for the ones at the back, I try to separate it by using a darker tone which has more indigo in the mix. It's up to you whether you want to create a gradient or just use one color. For me personally, I just like to add that darker color near the leaf that's in front. So there's a slight transition of color. As you can see, I'm jumping from place to place instead of finishing the leaves off the beetroot. That's because the surface is still very wet so I don't want to disrupt it since I want my paint to stay separated on those areas instead of them blending into each other which is what they're going to do when you add wet paint on a wet surface. Also for the filler leaves, I didn't mention this before, but it's completely up to you whether you want to use a different color to paint the stem. It's also nice to have a darker color for the stem if that's something that you'd like to do. Now moving on to the potted plant, as you can see I didn't even end up sketching out the plant itself since I find it a bit more flexible for me to paint freehand. And for this I'm painting rosemaries. In terms of the color, I used the exact same mixtures as before and because I'm going to be painting a lot of rosemaries, I just like to play around with the ratio so each of those stems have different colors and they're not going to just blend with each other. I began by painting the larger stems and then I follow it up by filling in the rest of the smaller areas and as I'm doing this I'm jumping from place to place making sure that the paint is completely dry before adding on more. This way no area will puddle up and create a mess. Once I'm done painting on all of the leaves or the stems, I then start using different colors in a darker value just to add a bit of shadows for some of those leaves. Thank you. 
I think I'm done with the greeneries for now, so I'm going to move on to paint the beetroot. For this, I used Crimson Lake with a tiny bit of indigo. I'm only going to paint this one though and leave it to dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to paint the tomato. For this, I used a mix of vermilion with a bit of Hansa yellow for the top part to make it a bit orangey. And as I get to the bottom, I used a mix of vermilion with a bit of Crimson Lake to create a deeper red. While I was painting this on, I left a bit of white negative space for the highlights, but you don't have to do this because later I'm actually just going to smudge it together because I wasn't happy with the placement of the highlights and I just ended up using bleed proof white. After this, I'm going to move back to the beetroot. For this, I used a bit more indigo in the ratio to paint a bit of texture and shadow on the left hand side. And I just used the same mix as before to paint the beetroot behind and a darker tone to paint the root to make it stand out a bit more. While the surface is still wet, I added a bit more indigo in the mix and leave it to dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to paint the carrots. I used a mix of Hansi Yellow Medium with a bit of vermilion. Before I add the details on the carrots, I'm just going to let them dry and move on to the other objects. I'm going to paint the handles on the scissors. For this, I used a mix of Crimson Lake and Vermilion so it matches the color of the tomatoes. For the pot here, I used a mix of Vermilion, Hansa Yellow and Sepia and I'm just playing around with the ratio so each area has a slightly different tonal value. And I'm also going to leave out some white negative space here and there for a bit of texture. If I want to separate the rims and the bottom of the pot, I would just use more sepia in the mix for a darker color. While I still have the same color mixture on my palette, I'm going to color in my stack of pots and I'm just going to paint the one in the middle and wait for that to dry. As for the soil on this tiny pot, I use sepia. For the base color of the hat, I'm just going to paint it with yellow ochre and while I still have a bit of yellow ochre on my brush, I'm going to also paint the base color of the seat pockets. For the handle of the gardening tools, here I used a mix of vermilion, crimson lake and a bit of sepia. The next thing I'm going to paint is the watering can. For this, I'm using the same grayish blue mix as before, but I darken it by adding a little bit of sepia. Here, as you can see, I tried to leave out some highlights, but at the end, I kind of knew I was going to use bleed proof white anyway, so I ended up coloring the whole thing. As for the handle, I use a thicker consistency of the same mix as before, and for this top part or the rim, I use a mix of indigo and gray of gray. Once the base layer is completely dry, here I'm layering on more paint and this is where I also left out more of the highlight space. And I'm going to paint the shadows using that same mix in a thicker consistency again for the inside, the bottom of the rim and also the bottom of the watering can. Now moving back to the stacked pots, I used the same terracotta mix as before but I added more yellow ochre for a lighter color. As for the top, I added more sepia for a darker tone. So even if these colors are very similar, they're still different in tonal value. Here I'm going to go back to the bottom pot again and I'm layering on more paint to separate the rim of the pot. I'm also going to do the same thing for the pot at the top and I want to make sure that the faces of the pots stay separated. For the boots, I used a mix of Crimson Lake, Sepia and a bit of Hansi Yellow to create a different tone of brown and I'm just using a light consistency to paint the base color first. For the soles of the boots, I want it to be slightly darker and more muted, so I use more sepia in the mix. I do want to use a heavier load though, but for the one at the back, I decided to just use a light layer first so I can separate the details and the faces. I want to add grip to the soles, so I'm just going to paint on lines. You can also do any other designs you have in mind, but I just find this is a bit more simpler. And for the top face or the sides of the boots, I just use the same thick consistency of sepia. 
Since I feel like the bottom part of the sole is a bit too light, I ended up smudging some of the colors downwards and I'm just going to leave that to dry while I paint other areas of the boots. I just played around with the ratio of the color mixture to create different browns and for the inside since I want it to be really dark, I added indigo in the mixture. Using the same color mixture with the inside of the boots, I'm also going to reline the soles for the boot at the back. For the fabric at the back, I use a thick consistency of orange from Vermilion and Hansa Yellow, but you can also use any other colors. I'm also going to use this orange to paint the base color for the gloves. For the bottom of the gloves, I'm just going to use the same mix in a thicker consistency, but you can use any other colors you have in mind. For the tiny seed pockets, the design that I'm going to paint on is a couple of beetroots on the left here and on the right I'm going to add some cherry tomatoes. These are just what I paint on since they're already part of the doodle in a way, so I just want to keep it cohesive. But you can paint on any other flowers, fruits, or vegetables you want. In terms of the colors, I just kept things simple. I used a mix of Crimson Lake and Vermilion for both the beetroot and the tomatoes, and whatever green that I already had on my palette. Here I decided to go back on the overalls. This is before I decided to outline with colored pencils, but I just used the same color mixture as the watering can. But if I knew I was going to add outlines with my colored pencils, I would just do that instead of this. So it's up to you which method you want to pick. For the buttons on the overalls, I just used a thick consistency of Hansa Yellow. Now I'm going to go back to the carrots. For this, I used the same orange mix as before with added sepia to darken it, and I just made some curved lines for the texture. I'm going to do the same with the beetroot. For this, I just used the same mix as before with crimson lake and indigo. I'm also going to add mid ribs for the leaves, and for this, I just used the dark green mix that I already had on my palette, which is most probably from Terra Verde and indigo. Now that I've painted the main elements, I'm going to paint the tiny filler flowers. For the pansies, I'm going to use a light purple mix which is from Crimson Lake, tiniest bit of indigo and a lot of grey of grey. And I'm just going to use a medium to thin consistency to paint the base colour for all of them. For the rest of the flowers, I'm going to use a pink colour which is from grey of grey and vermilion with a little bit of Crimson Lake. For these flowers, I just use a thicker consistency so the colors are slightly darker. The base color of the pansy should be dry by now, so I'm going to follow it up with the details. I'm using a dark purple mix here from Crimson Lake, Vermilion, and Indigo. I'm going to paint this for the center of the petals on the right and the left of the flower, and in the middle of the space I've left, I use a thick consistency of Hansi Yellow. As for the center of the pink flowers, I use a thick consistency of sepia. As for the dandelions, I'm just going to fill it in using a thin consistency of grey of grey. I forgot to add the detail for the hat here, I just used a thick consistency of sepia and I'm going to add textures using the brown terracotta mix. You also have the option of creating this texture using colored pencils. So after that, I think I've pretty much painted everything, so I'm just going to outline. I'm going to use the brown pen for the brown objects, so like this glove as well as the pots and things like that. As for the rest, I'm going to use colored pencils. To paint the texture of the dandelion, I'm going to use this blue. It doesn't really matter what type of blue you use though, and this is just the handiest one that I had on hand. I'm also going to use this to add the details on the overalls. 
As for the rest of the outlines, I tried to basically use a darker version of the same base color. This is basically to outline and add line details to the objects. So from here, I'm just going to keep outlining and adding little bits of details using colored pencils. While I'm figuring out what else to outline, I'm also going to add some white highlights using bleed proof white and a thick consistency. I always feel like adding smaller elements to fill in some of the tiny spaces. For this doodle, because I want it to feel bright and summery, I used my yellow colored pencils to add some tiny little flowers. And because this is watercolor pencils, I felt like the pigments come out way better after I wet the surface, so I actually just used my brush to wet the surface before drawing it on and it just looks so much brighter. Lastly, I also used the same yellow and the blue that I already had to add some tiny circles. I just find that it looks fun this way and that's pretty much it for this painting. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys enjoyed what you see today, please consider subscribing. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!